Ladies and gentlemen, coming to you from downtown Burbank, California, Hobbit Town is now in session. Let's welcome the Dungeon Master himself, Spencer, Criterion Edition, Crittenton. Here he comes. And now, Do it up. let's welcome the mayor of Harmontown, yeah. Dan Harmontown. Yeah. Thank you. Here's the mayor of Harmontown in front of us. Yo. Dan Harmon. Yo. 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 Rapping. Rapping. Rapping at the top of the show. Flow. All right. <laughs> oh, yeah. That was slick, man. Holy shit. I think that was my most pared down, but but therefore uh, uh, admirable freestyling in, in, in the uh, history of the show. Well, Shrab's uh, comp trolling this episode. You're welcome, Sauron. He looks like no face. Um, he's, he's already doing physical bits. Hey, I was the one that wanted to do the podcast on video. Uh this He's, is your, uh, yeah, this is you. What do you remind me of? That's a, a, a Sesame Street Muppet, right? Those yup, 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 yup guys. Yeah, I remind you of that. In that jacket with the hood over. Okay. In the audio world, uh, what's going on? Nothing. I, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm on deadline. I, I, I have to finish a script uh, uh, tonight, so I'm going to try to... So we're going to talk double fast to get the show done. Wait, but don't distract from what's going on in the audio world. Oh, well, that's what I was just switching over to not talking about what Shrub looked like. Oh, yeah. right. No, let's talk about what Shrub looks like. Well, that would be going back into the video world. Oh, shit. Yeah, let's not do that. Let's not go back into the video world. Well, it's going to be a great show. No, yeah. Um, never in the history of the opening of a show have there ever been more milestones of that in the span of two minutes. Um, uh, this is the part where I talk about whatever's going on. Like I said, I got to finish a script. <sighs> Excuse me. <laughs> that was Schraub. No, it wasn't. Um, <laughs> I covered my mouth, but I didn't think you would hear that. <laughs> um, I, uh... I, yeah, so I'm probably gonna. I, I, I'll probably have one drink in the uh, at some point in the show, maybe even three, because I, it, it's it's it's. I'll start to get nervous that the the show is going poorly because I'm bad at, at doing a show. But but I really got to keep my shit together. Yeah, I gotta fucking. My therapist told me, uh, uh, this is. I'm sitting on this script because it is my last chance to be miserable. I am this close to happy. That's interesting. That's interesting. I'm going through the same thing myself. I'm having a. What are you using to make yourself miserable? Doing nothing. Just, just, just postponing stuff. I mean, we're procrastinating. So we're yeah, well. So Cody, Cody, right now is at home. Just, you know, she probably doesn't mind me t telling this because she she just finished a. She's on hiatus at her regular job, and then she her 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 other project that she like put a lot you know she just spent a year of a relationship with this this these series of scripts and and that lifetime has come to an end so she's having that like writer postpartum kind of depression and it's just funny because we're all miserable <laughs> you're miserable because you don't have a job to do cody's miserable because her job is over i'm miserable because i won't stop working and and I think it, the it's like the grass is greener, never applied uh, more. It, like we 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 are afraid to deal. Look, I'm just gonna go there because my therapist goes there. We're afraid to deal with God. Like I and and if you're an atheist, I applaud you because that just means you're a scientist and a skeptic, and we need those more than ever. So when I say God, you just think universe, think chaos, um, but. I don't want to pussyfoot around about it because I believe in a God that like made my sister retarded and will just give you leukemia because he's bored. Um, so I, I'm like scared of God and like, I don't want to move on to that part of my life where I have to have a relationship with this 
thing I picture as a big Dan Harmon head in the sky that's like psycho and just does crazy shit um, just to remind you that he's around. Um, I feel like a relationship with God is like owing Polly and Goodfellas money. It's like like cause he's doing you favors, and then now you're like, what do I have to do? And you don't know. And I've I, I, and I've wanted like forever to to like control that. You know, I've wanted to be, like it's that's what a that's what a writer does or a workaholic does is they they say, well, I'm in charge of my bad luck and my good luck. I'm in charge of 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 like whether or not I'm having a bad day. But it's crazy to do that because I've been doing it for 45 years and what if tomorrow I find a lump or whatever? It's like, I'm gonna be double the sucker. I just gotta, I just gotta stop pretending like it's hard to write. It's just been the biggest scam that I've ever perpetrated on myself and humanity. It's just not, what I do is not difficult. And I think I'm ashamed of that and like I try to make it like it's like art or something, and it's like. Do you so think tired. you're doing that because if it wasn't difficult, it wouldn't be work? If yeah, it, yeah. I think the voice of my brother, who I've been, I've tried not to mention on this podcast because we don't speak to each other because I mentioned him on the podcast. So I've tried to like, like I'm not going to talk about my brother. But another way of looking at it is I can do nothing but talk shit about my brother now forever. But 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 the, the but you know my brother is five years older than me and growing up like it's just like this chorus of like he was the he was the guy who was like yeah you're not you got mom convinced but you're a fucking idiot you're or you're not an idiot like my brother knew I was smart but like you're not special you're not like like you just you're you're just a lazy piece of shit. You know, and like you're spoiled and you're entitled and mom buys it. And just because just because I am five years older than you and I smoke weed first and I set fire to the mailbox first and then the driveway first and then I poured motor oil in the neighbor's swimming pool first and dropped out of high school first and uh, and and hit the house with a baseball bat first. Just because I'm doing all those things first doesn't mean you're not going to do them. And even if you don't do them, it'll only be because you had me as an example. And the truth is, you're just a you're charlatan. You know, mm -hmm. you're just like this. You just you just, you're the you're the baby. You like you got you got it all. You got you got you got everything like lined lined up for you. And uh, and that and that that voice is an important voice because it keeps you, especially in these days of like monitoring, checking privilege and whatever. It's like. Ugh, I got I got like this great fucking antenna for that um, because I'm just always going, eh, you little piece of shit in my head over and over again. Like you're not you're not stop trying to act like you're fucking talented. You're not talented and all this stuff. And uh, so the idea of me being like, like just good or lucky, like it, you know, it has to do with my sister too. It's like. It's just it just fucks with me, but it's 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 been selfish to to like think of it that way. It's been it's 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 it doesn't make any sense. It's not productive at all. Sorry, I have my back to you, Spencer. No, I like I kind it of better. have a suspicion that you're God, so I wanted to leave you out of this for a little. Right. Bit. If you are God, mm -hmm. prove it. If I was God, wouldn't it like? betray my purposes to prove it yeah, at this point so he just proved that he's i don't think so i my therapist said could you be crazier <laughs> that's what she wants no she said <laughs> she said uh could you live with the fact that you weren't like the special one you know, mm -hmm. like, it, I mean, like, you know, like, you, cause you, you feel like, cause I've, I've had problems where I'm just like, well, you know, you get, you get the spotlight and, and then all of a sudden it, your brain goes blank and you can't figure it out or whatever. And just like, well, well, maybe don't be tempted by the spotlight. You know, you don't have to be the best. You yeah. Know? It, and it does, especially with writing, you know, like write, writing is, and any art is like when you go like, oh, I'm going to make the best thing I've ever done before. That's usually failure. But if you go, I'm going to make a piece of shit that's just going to be fun to do. That's yeah. when you do your best work. Yeah. And, you, and, 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 and another thing my therapist pointed out is like, you know what? You know what? Uh, uh, aside from being like uh, 
uh, cheating, you know, if you were to just do what's easy and fun for you and let yourself be good at it and fast at it. And it's like you, you, you work like barely at all. Aside from not being fair, another thing that that would be is effeminate because it's like I have this masculine relationship, this faux Hemingway relationship with the idea of writing. Like, oh, you've got to dig and make and decide and create and alter and 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 ultimately it's it's, it's taking something that should not be dichotomous i.e success and failure or kill or be killed or good or bad writing and 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 it, it and turning it into that that's what you do when you're like competitive and petty and self-loathing and about your work like oh i, I want to this is a sh I, I'm, I'm writing shitty today now i'm writing good this has to be the best and, it's, and then you wonder why you take six months to to write something that could take you three hours and it's because you're like you've decided to like get into a ring and like make everything about like combat and do you write every day do you like Fuck, do, no no do you do, but when you when you decide i'm gonna write today do you write like a couple of hours do you write how long i mean do you sit down and go i'm gonna do a marathon or do you do like i, I have like a conflict 10 minutes of at a time interest here because the because i i'll answer that question the show after i turn in the script that okay. i've been working on for way too long right because i, I want to answer that question honestly mm. and if i answer it honestly right now the people that 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 are that I've been torturing by sitting on this script like might just find me and shoot me because I don't, that that answer is that, that that's part of the thing that we dread is like well what page are you on what yeah. what what how long did you know like what's the it's like yeah if I if I was working six hours a day this entire time on this and yeah. focusing on it of course it would have been done by now I. Get I, I try to write every day, but what I end up doing is I go to my spot, I open up my laptop, and I stare at the computer for six to eight hours. Then I close it up and then go, I can't work. I'll start on it tomorrow. So I'll do, I'll, I, and I'll be doing that for months and months and months. Yeah. And I mean, I'll, believe me, I, I I'm... I'll, I'll, I'll maybe write like three sentences. I'll. I, I mean, it used to be so much easier because I would write. I would write because I would go, "Oh, I'm a shitty writer. I'm just going to write a piece of shit." And it was so much easier back then. Um, it is a good enough segue. I mean, we could because we, we can talk with our guest about all the other crap, which is just like everyone else, just going like, "Holy shit, the world is exploding." Um, and we, we can talk about that with our guest, but what a good segue because we have a woman writer, not a female writer. <laughs> that's a that's a callback to one of her pieces. She's got if you go if you go to her website, um, uh, carabrown.com, you can see there's like a there's like a, a list of the shit she's written for Jezebel and um, and, and and other uh, sites and she has and, and blog entries and stuff and she's like uh, it's 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 all really great stuff. I'm looking forward to just making friends with her or chatting with her. Please welcome Kara Brown. Hello. I'm not good at uh, greeting people. I, Hello. I don't know if I was. He's terrible at it. Hello. <sighs> you can, would, it you, would you like some vodka? Oh man, you know I'm getting over a cold, so vodka helps that, right? Yeah. 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 And then it'll yeah. So dig in you oh, dig into the ice with your that with okay. your. That's a lot of ice. Yeah. He uses maybe, all of that by the end of the ice. show. Yeah. Do you want me to pour it for you? You know. Like a gentleman. Well, I'm a guest, you know. <laughs> or am I going to read a, an article on Jezebel <laughs> next week of why men need to stop pouring, pouring women vodka. drinks? You know, if I was still at Jezebel, it might be a concern. We'll Ooh. see. That's so, good. That was a. That, that was thank a, you. Thank you. You've also retired your Shade Court. I saw. I, oh my gosh, you know about Shade Court? Well, because I went to your website, so mm -hmm. I was like, like looking through all your stuff. I thought, I thought your voice was amazingly crisp and, and oh. um, 
like uh uh uh, 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 uh like like i you you literally have an entry that talks about this like angry black woman like stereotype mm -hmm. and how people can't like and so it's 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 hard to like you're you're a white guy and you like you read stuff and you go like i want i want to let this person know that they're intimidating <laughs> <laughs> because that would be a good compliment but maybe not to well, no i know i know what you mean because i've gotten intimidating i i think outside of the fact that i'm a black woman like i know that i'm kind of like an intimidating person so I think you can. I think you can divorce the two. I am intimidating, so you can say it. I you, won't. I won't write about it tomorrow. You say it. You have a. You, you also have a pasta fetish. I do have a pasta. Fetish. <laughs> I, 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 I looked at it, your website. I was like, I think we'll probably get along. I think this will be fine. <laughs> I make. I make fresh pasta. Um, fancy pasta, bitch. Yeah, I. I do do that. It was sort of a response, I think, to like I started early last year, and I was like, this feels like it's going to be a long ass four years hopefully yeah. and i i needed like some sort of i like it because it's um a busy body type of hobby like you you're doing something with your hands but it doesn't necessarily require a lot of like brain power and you can watch tv or do something like that um and then at the end you get to eat pasta so but you hate arugula and I do which continues arugula. to make us he's literally siblings. listening everything on my website <laughs> i was like, i was so glad to see somebody oh, just arugula's shit disgusting. on arugula it's disgusting I'm it's so disgusting. tired of people acting like it's like uh, delicious. It's everywhere too. Yeah. They put it on everything. Yeah, they'll, they won't. They, they won't put it in the menu description. By the way, we're going to put what you call scraggly ass. Uh, what was? How did you describe <laughs> arugula? I don't even remember that was <laughs> scraggly lettuce. Yeah. Um, on, on top of your shit, that's going to like in the mixed taste salads. like you got lost. Yeah, you know when they give you like a side salad and they don't tell you arugula is in the side salad. I hate that. Yeah. Um, but uh, the, the headline item is that you're a TV writer. You, you, yeah. you, you, did you, were you on Blackish? No, no. I actually went from Jezebel to Gronish. Okay. Um, it was, it was, yeah, made, made that leap. Um, Gronish is the spinoff uh, of Blackish. Yes. Uh, I, I honestly have not I've only seen clips of Blackish, even yeah, though yeah. I, I did a panel with the creator and, and we, he's, he's much more respectful to my work than obviously <laughs> I am of his or, or toward his, not of his, cause I haven't seen it. Um, but the, so I don't know, can you describe? Yeah. yeah. The, so, um, Blackish is about a black family. Um, Gross. I know, right? <laughs> uh, Cosby Show esque, just in that it's like um, you know, a well-to-do black family right now, um, navigating all of that. Um, and in the show, the oldest daughter, uh, uh, her name's Zoe Johnson, played by Yara Shahidi. And so our show is Yara going off to college, um, conveniently a different world esque, um, and her her dealing with all of that and and being in college right now and. And all that bullshit. So, were you a different world fan? I was. I was a little young to watch it while it was on, but later I I would watch a different world. Yeah. And so you're way too young to. Did you watch Cosby and like syndication or? Yeah, I think yeah, yeah. What was your What's your take as a modern millennial? I'm assuming millennial. <laughs> I don't yeah, know. Yeah. No, I'm a millennial. Okay. Like what? What's your take on the on the on the Huxtables as as a black family on television? I mean, I love the Cosby Show. I think like everyone. I actually still. Do. I wrote about. I wrote a piece about this recently, where like, in sort of the wake of all of this stuff that's happening and coming up, like, for me, I may not fuck with Bill Cosby anymore, but it seems really disingenuous to act like I didn't love the Cosby show because it was wonderful and I get that for a lot of people it's tainted now like understandably and it could be difficult to watch but um you know I'm not going to pretend like it wasn't amazing and like groundbreaking and that um I didn't love seeing a family like that on television it sort of seems like I mean especially at its at its high point when there were still only three or four networks there's a different game being played that we that we learn from now which is that the, the I always pointing out the Norman Lear philosophy, which is that we're not, our goal is not to like, well, I don't know. All I know is that what, what, what Norman Lear was, 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 was like looking at himself and going like, look, I don't, I don't look like, uh, 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 the, the, the family that I'm about to create a show for, but if I don't, 
um, nobody will. And then the syndrome will continue where people are watching television and seeing nobody that looks like them, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And, um, and so like, it's, it just seems like TV, like we, we, we made a decision to worship it. We did, we yeah. made a decision, a decision that, that, that like, it's, it wasn't even going to be about quality. It's, okay. a, it's not art. It was like a, it's like a barn raising or a mm -hmm. church, you know, mm -hmm. like we, and so it, 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 that, that I watched the Cosby show every night and like, I, it was, it was, it, it was like, you know, you would read in TV guide this and that about the idea of it having something to do with blackness, but mm -hmm. the more important thing was that it was the Cosby show and mm -hmm. it was just, it was the Huxtables and it was like always going to be amazing and funny. And part of that was like listening to this like mm -hmm. audience that may or may not have existed in the live studio mm -hmm. losing their fucking shit <laughs> because this episode is about, you know, it might come down to yeah. Bill Cosby like making a face for his daughter to help <laughs> her get over a cold or something. And it's just, just like everyone's just pissing themselves. Yeah. In the, and it, and it, we, just, we just took part in it. Yeah. I don't know what my goddamn point is <laughs> I'm, ha I'm having my very first like i'm a bad interviewer vodka so it's not gonna make me a good interviewer but like so what so your perspective on this though is like it's a little different like because i'm i'm possibly 20 or more years older than you i have no idea i'm not gonna ask <laughs> um but like what do you what do you make of these shifting definitions like as far as as far as white people are concerned like your advice to them like in terms of like are you supposed to let's just start with the basic are mm -hmm. you supposed to recognize race or or this fantasy of being colorblind like like let's get that don't out of say the colorblind way. yeah that's bad like we tried that for like this yeah. tremendous amount of time and yeah. it just didn't it's also not like real. i don't want i don't know that and it color blindness is, is sort of saying like just pretend everyone's white that's like kind of what people mean when they say right. colorblind and like i don't want like i like being black so i don't need anyone to act like I'm not, and I'm sure that other people of color like being whatever they are, and so, and I'm oh, sure white people amazing. love being white because oh. it seems incredible. So, um, I you went know. into a library the other day, and they said you don't have to bring the books back. Really? Yeah, I was just like, what? And they're really? like, they did this like <laughs> gesture. <laughs> I was like, oh. And then there was a black guy behind me, and they were, and yeah. they were like, this is overdue. And he was like, well, I know that's how libraries work. And the person, the librarian, was like, shh. I didn't know that's what they meant by shh. All right. Anyway, sorry. I'm... The the um. What is going on? I, 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 I... It's complicated. No, I, I followed all of that. I, yeah. The, the the but okay. So is this is your this is your first step into TV, right? From it prose, is, yeah. from essay. Yes. Um. How, how did you get the job? Um. I got the job. So I had been. So I'd been at Jezebel. I actually like when I moved to LA. I, moved, I was living in New York. I moved to LA with the intention of getting into TV writing. Um, and I had a really strong start at Jezebel. So I kind of got distracted. I was like, Ta-Nehisi Coates knows my name. Who the fuck cares about TV? <laughs> um, and then Gawker filed for bankruptcy. And I panicked. And also, I think it clarified that ultimately what I was trying to do. And so I had been working on a sample that I ended up finishing in like two weeks out of just like sheer desperation. Um, and a friend, he helped me edit it. And then he actually, he was repped, he's repped at CAA. They were having this comedy writers boot camp kind of seminar thing and it was aimed towards women and people of color. Um, and so there were like panels and networking and whatever. And so Issa Rae was one of the speakers. And so I knew that she, she followed me on Twitter and I was like, I know, I think she knows who I am and has read my writing. And so I went up to her and she immediately was like, oh my God, hello. Like I didn't know you were interested in TV. And so she had her deal, she has her deal with HBO. And so she was looking for uh, material. And I was like, I literally have this one script. And I sent it to her team and they're like, cool. And they liked it and they sent it to HBO. And then all of a sudden I had a meeting with an Amy at HBO, which meant nothing to me. <laughs> I was like, I don't know guys, I'm going to, she's the head of comedy at HBO. I had no idea. <laughs> like, um, and people, um, a bunch of people who like didn't really give a shit before started to give a shit. So like, that's how I got my agents. Cause like I had sort of been sending things to friends at agencies and, and obviously nobody cared until you had something going on. Um, and then I just spent the, beginning of 2017 like doing all those 
generals and that slog. Um, and then I had been going into ABC a lot and they kept being like, we think Kenya, Kenya Bears who created Blackish and created Grownish, they're like, we think Kenya will like you, we think Kenya will like you. And I kind of had to wait until he, um, the show had been picked up. He didn't like want to meet anyone until everything was ready. And then I, I drove to Encino and we had we had coffee and, and then I got the job. This is exciting. Yeah. Are you, are you, are you, so you're just, a, you're a staff writer mm -hmm. entering and like, are, what are, what are, well, and you can say, I don't want to talk about this because I don't want to start my career, my TV career, <laughs> uh, even risking doing the right thing. But I was just like curious, like, what are your, what are your nightmare scenarios in your head when you think about the first day of school? Like, <laughs> I, the thing is, I had been working from home for three years, so the idea of just interacting with humans all day was like, I, it was all I need. Like, I was so desperate for human contact that it would have had to have been such an unbelievable nightmare for me to have, like, been unhappy with the setup. So, um, I don't know. I just didn't really, like, one of the things that I think has helped me is there's a lot of stuff that I didn't really know, like, in the same way that I didn't really know who Amy was. I was like, I don't know, guys, like, this will be fine. And um, because I didn't really know what to be afraid of, I wasn't that afraid of things. Which is things. Mo most of the value in a staff writer. I mean, yeah. like, like you're the, the, this town runs on fresh blood from the yeah. Midwest. By the way, where did you grow up? I grew up in Seattle, Seattle, Washington. Yeah, yeah that, that naivete, Shrab and I are never going to get that back. But we did yeah. our best writing when we were probably how old you are. I'm not going to ask. Um, can, but we ask. were like, we, we, we wrote this pilot called Heat Vision and Jack, and it might as well have been called We Don't Know How TV Works. Like, <laughs> like we just we just grew up watching it, and we just, like, love the idea of a talking yeah. motorcycle kind of thing. It was like, like that naivete is, which is a bad word for it, it's, 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 it's not naivete. It's, it's, no, I didn't. I mean, there was so much stuff I didn't, like, when the scripts kept coming back in different colors, and I was like, <laughs> I was like, I didn't want to ask anyone. You know, like obviously I wasn't gonna ask like you know someone in charge and so I might have asked one of the writers assistants or I think I maybe just figured it out I was like oh it's a different draft it's a different draft when the scripts are in different color <laughs> and I was like oh it's purple today uh, and, does that mean I did bad yesterday? yeah I like, didn't really <laughs> figure it out um, yeah I I never knew I guess I kind of still don't know when because people will like make jokes about you know in community it was like okay we're on we're on tier three of like we've been in salmon we've been in triple 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 blues we've definitely I flipped the oh, flipped wow. the rainbow a couple times wow. with yeah. our rewrites like, like what do you do when the, you go back to blue you you or just whatever. hope it that just is by that time it's blue. mathematically impossible that there's uh <laughs> still blue pages left from the first time you had a meltdown <laughs> if you've done that many rewrites how can it be possible that there's still first blue i think you i think there is some kind of like i i yeah. the, this, uh, this is why writers when, when that situation is happening you you, you're less concerned exactly which blue pages you're looking at because it's like we're fucking 12 days behind yeah well i also i also i also like it it makes me wonder yeah i always i would never could tell because who's going to come up to me and say um you know there's way too many uh, colors in, right. in the binder you know it's fucking ridiculous i would always say this is getting crazy can we can we repaginate like this is like <laughs> Because they do this thing where the pages break because oh, yeah, yeah. they don't want the other page numbers to change. So then you end up on community and be like, you know, just turn the page. And then Troy says, uh, Troy and Abed in the – and then you turn the page because I changed it to morning. Um, <laughs> anyways, the, the uh, that's, a, that's, another, that's a reason why I – as much as I – I understand that people who, like, tweet me – or through other channels, like inquire about the concept of a writer's assistant. Mm. I know that the image in their head is like of a squire with like a quill, <laughs> you know, that he hands to Shakespeare when Shakespeare gets yeah. in a duel with with another writer. And, and, and that but, happens. It does it's happen. It's just not the main part of the it's job. Just, just, yeah, it's not, it's not. I thank God I never had to be a I would have been, if I had had to come up and sort of like the traditional like a PA and then a writer's PA, I would have, I, I would, I would have found a different career. I'm not organized. Like I find that job insane, and they're so like I would have, I wouldn't have made it through a season of television as a writer's. Yeah, assistant. for sure. I, I, it's, 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 it's legitimately. I guess, I guess I'm saying this like it's a mind blower because what isn't 
it, but it's harder work than the yeah. the, the writing of the show. We just sit around it's, and talk. It, it, yeah, and and the the fact that the writer's assistant is there means that what is was already an easier easy job, which is going. Oh, what if a guy had a horse? Um, we now just like sit there and like vape and go. What if a guy had a horse? And like it's up to Tim to remember yeah. that we said it. And um, yeah, and 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 a lot of those people are good writers. It's yeah. not like oh, those people are science brains like yeah. they're clerical thinkers like they're no they're 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 decent writers who go on to good writing careers and 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 then you look back and go oh man that poor fucking guy i uh, yeah uh anyways couldn't have been me but uh well let's talk about like fraud complex have you have you do, 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 is it is it is it different for you like at all like you 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 when you leap from the pages of of uh of the internets into into a writer's room like that do you ever uh like are, are you are you plagued with anxiety about um, i don't deserve this or anything like that i mean i think one of the things for me is that i had been writing professionally for three years like people were giving me money to write and also because it's the internet i was getting a lot of feedback so i was like i know i like when i first wrote that that script i was like i know i'm not a shitty writer because like it would have someone would have figured it out over the course of the three years i don't know if i'm good at writing comedy scripts but it's probably not going to be super shitty because i'm not a super shitty writer um so it helped me in that regard but i mean i feel like even now um like i just wrote i wrote a cover story for the fader on the singer SZA, and it was the first feature like profile i'd ever written and so i when I finished the story, I was like, I think this is fine. I was like, this is a fine story. And the response has been much, people think it's much better than fine. Um, but that's usually how I am with my writing. So I, you know, even like when I was at Jezebel and I would write something, I was like, this isn't that funny. And then the commenters like are finding it really funny. So I know that my standard is different. Um, so I think it, it and I kind of knew that. So I was like, even if I think this is fine, I think other people think it's better than that, so I wasn't as nervous about that. Um, but I don't know, it's like, also it's funny, like my dad says this, I, I lived in Dallas, Texas until I was seven, and so my dad talked about when he was raising me and my sister, um, my mom was there too, but he tells the story, um, and he's like, I really raised, tried to make sure that you had a lot of self-esteem, because I didn't want to raise like a little black girl in the South to not have a lot of self-esteem because there were probably a lot of things that would crush that and so and then his punchline is that like he went too far <laughs> so, um i think that's never been a real big problem for me um yeah so, my yeah. mom made it very very clear that i could do anything i wanted and i <laughs> I, I at 45 i sometimes like i now i'm entering an age where i'm like i'm like oh, what if she was lying? Like, 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 like it's, and then and I'm like, well, too late. Yeah. <laughs> like everybody Which else bought it. Which is probably the idea, right? Like that. It, I mean, know. it is like when we talk about, cause I've always, I, I, I've always used the example when I'm like on panels and stuff. It's like, you know, being a, being a, like a, like a, a guy that like wishes he could, you know, in some regard, as far as doing the right thing with a job that is very like a cake, a, like a, not a cakewalk, but a, um, an honor, a privilege, like um, a rare like thing to to come by this job. Like I, my white guilt and stuff, and like like always makes me what what, I'm like, what, what am I supposed to do to, to like 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 take my little piece of the of the industry and like try to like make sure I left it a little better than I than I came into it. And the metaphor that I've constantly used is is like the problem isn't that you know we can talk about representation of the writers and all these things but like we've the the syndrome ends the day like a black girl in six, sixth grade right now mm -hmm. is watching tv and going like oh i i i think i'll try yeah writing that which i just don't think it was in, in when I was your age, probably, I won't ask the I think that I don't think that that was even a remote. I, I, yeah. I, and it was like, that's what we talk. I think that's what we're getting at when we talk about this, this systemic like, yeah, problems that are that are now we're not going to pretend that they're ending, but that that, that we notice that the, the actual like profound changes are coming in the form of show running. Like, like, yeah, I mean, Shonda Rhimes was like when I first watched Grey's Anatomy and then 
because you know it was set in Seattle, and so we're like, we're gonna watch the show. Um, and then when I saw a picture of her for the first time, because like you don't see who the showrunner, you know, unless it's. Um, so the first time I saw a picture of her, and I was like, oh my god, like this black. Woman Shonda Rhimes could be like an old Jewish guy. It's kind yeah, of yeah, like I mean, <laughs> Sh- like, Shonda, we're going for lunch. Yeah, I'm working on the rewrites. <laughs> Like could have been, and then I saw the picture, and I was like, I think that was like that was a very important thing for me. Like, oh, she's doing this, um, yeah. and that that person exists and is doing this. It's a job. It's a job yeah. you can do. It's like 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 I, I yeah. I just think, I, and I it's not. I I was just you know like I go to the extreme place with like little black girl like mm-hmm. that image, but it's like little kids in general. Yeah. But, but herein lies the problem now. Like in terms of your bi- biography too, we'll segue into that because I always feel like then, but we can't tell people to take a shot at this job. Mm-hmm. It would, it's, there's part of that is extremely irresponsible. Yeah. It would be more responsible to tell somebody to try being a doctor because there's like definitive milestones, scholarships, tests, a million chances for you to, uh, for for you and I as somebody who might say to somebody you should be a writer mm-hmm. like like for us to have sent that person on a path to hell yeah it it seems like something I don't know like I, re- I one of the things I hate is when someone like wins an award like and you know and they're up there and they're like follow your dreams you can do anything it's like are you good at that thing though because you shouldn't be telling people who are bad at something like you at a certain point you know I think you have an inkling of like can I do this? Is this really like, is this possible? Do I believe in myself? Whatever. And like, I don't think you should be like, I I think that's an important thing to remember. So, but also we got to be honest, like even a lower middle class white guy like myself, I think like there is a support system there. I mean, I was borrowing money from my mom for, you know, well into my twenties. Um, and like my mom was like, yeah, you, you look like a, comedian you look like a writer you know here's another three grand for yeah you know what really turned out to be cocaine and weed and <laughs> I, like like but like it, it was like it i i, I can't fathom that yeah. that exists in 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 yeah. like the neighborhoods that that would that it would be important for that to be because it's like but that's where my brain turns into a balloon animal because i'm like you can't tell a poor kid like a dirt poor kid mm-hmm. Um, yeah, you should go to, you should try being a writer. You can, you, your dreams, you can do anything. It's like, no, he can't. Yeah. I mean, and like I, in a lot of ways, like my, when I was living in New York, um, I was working in PR and I had, um, I was just like blogging all the time. And so Jezebel had offered me an editorial fellowship. So that was a job that was at the time it was part-time minimum wage. And it was something where, like, if I had asked my parents for help, they would have. If I was like, "This is my dream," they would have. They would have helped me. They would have supported me. And I and I knew that I had that as an option. Um, but I also was just like, I don't want to ask them for help for something that I'm not like. Oh, this is this is like the dream. Right. Um, I like to save my big favors for you know when like I really need it. And I was like, I don't know if I need this bad enough. Um, yeah, I also want to lower my three thousand dollar number. That was me adjusting <laughs> for like Trump dollars. I'm, uh, you know, my that was like a hundred dollars. I never then. got I never got more than you can get out of an ATM from my right. mom. No, but like and I definitely I, spent it all on coke and weed. <laughs> like so, it really wasn't privilege. <laughs> like I didn't yeah. spend it on a typewriter. Right. Um, but yeah, and, and also I want to put another asterisk on something I said, because if there are, it's, it's like, like what I said, like, no, no, they can't, they can't. It, uh, it's like, well, no, I mean, it's it not as easy. There's no equivalent. Yeah. And if you don't know anyone, like one of the, the most helpful things for me is when I moved to LA and I started meeting TV writers and I was like, oh, these people are not that impressive. Surely I can figure this out if these dum dums have figured it out. <laughs> and like, I think that was really important to like realize that, like, oh, these are just regular, most of them are regular people doing this. But like, if you don't live in LA and you're not around those people, I have no idea how you would figure that out. Like, it seems yeah. like this mythical, unreachable thing. Yeah, it's difficult to figure out when the actual empire that is the geographically located Hollywood will just bottom out because yeah. it seems by a logical assessment that it's a total non-necessity anymore 
and we know that people are shooting things in Portland and Vancouver and and all over, and that a, a city a city going broke now a great way for them is to give tax incentives and say come shoot here and we will do it. Um, and so you keep I keep wondering like why are we here? What's going on? But it, it that's one thing that hasn't changed in 50 years is like oh yeah you move to LA and you get a drink in a bar and you are immediately gaining some kind of advantage over someone who's in Minneapolis aspiring to to write one day because you're just I, it's just erosion it's just yeah. it's just like you're you're gonna run into somebody you're gonna overhear jokes you're gonna yeah. like you're, you're just you're just getting desensitized to what is otherwise an impossibly mythical uh kingdom yeah. and you're right it's just a bunch of normal morons yeah. you know like we're just we're just piddling around out here like we're, we're plumbers that 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 didn't have to qualify for anything we don't we don't even have to you because you, you there's, there's no, no bar you really have to yeah like poster. you can't prove that uh, the toilet is leaking in writing you can yeah. you can say it but we can also go well, i think you have bad taste um i don't think you really understand what a toilet is sir um it, it, uh, but but yeah, specifically like class wise, where would you place yourself growing up? Where, where, where? Um, I mean, my dad, my dad worked at Microsoft. That's why he grew up in Seattle, but we moved back. Um, so like you know, I went to a, I went to a private school. I went to a private university. Um, so like I you know I don't I had a lot of friends. I had a lot of friends that were like very wealthy, and so I knew we weren't that. But I was like, we're fine. So I didn't you know we weren't like. But life was nice, for sure. What do you think Schraub's thinking over there? <laughs> how, how, how was growing up for you? It was all right. Yeah. <laughs> it was okay. I lived in a small town, mm -hmm. and I drew a lot, and I made, like, stop-motion animated movies. That's fun. And um, Schraub's hometown, Mayville, Wisconsin, a, there's a billboard outside of it, you know, like, like how towns have yeah. signs that, with logos and <laughs> slogans and things. And uh, Mayville was um, was a, a, the last stop where you could get like supplies if you were going to go to a place called Horicon, which is like uh, um, duck hunting territory. Okay. And uh, and so that was like a big thing for a town of that size. So the the sign outside of Rob's hometown says, "Welcome to Mayville, gateway to the marsh." Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> and then one, <laughs> I'm so one, jealous of that. I know. I know. Uh, and then one one. There was like a time where McDonald's, because I, I come from like a 3,000, 5,000 yeah. population town, and they we had a McDonald's yeah. in town, and that was a big deal. And McDonald's gave us a sign that said, with Ronald McDonald on it, and it said Mayville, Gateway to the Marsh. Oh, he, Ronald McDonald oh, was that, on McDonald's that sign. I, I, on it. I, I don't like, know if I ever... Like going, hey, we own you now. That's hilarious. <laughs> it's, like, it's like Adderall giving you a defibrillator. Yeah, uh, yeah. But, they, but the, the town wasn't big enough, and they went... <laughs> They, took, they closed down McDonald's and they took the sign they away. They took the sign no. away? They took the sign away. They took the sign away. I guess yes. they didn't want to get sued by somebody who was like, look, I'm... I have reverse diabetes. I need. I needed a a, a Big Mac, and you made me think I could get one here. <laughs> I was expecting a McDonald's. I'm and suing then, you for all your duck ammunition. And then they turned. They they turned the McDonald's that they was bought and turned into a mom and pop burger shop. And it was called Bumpy Burgers. That's maybe better, right? Bumpy. I don't know. Um, mom and pop. You know, that seems on on brand for what this town sounds like to me. Yeah, is Gro yeah. is Gronish done for its season? You do, you're yeah. finishing the whole season? Yeah, we finished. Um, we got a. Are we done second. with me? Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I move around. I stir. Okay, I, okay. I'm a good okay, host. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Um, we got a second season, twenty episode order. So. Oh, cool! It's it's happening. What network is that? It's on Freeform, which is what ABC Family ABC used Family, to be. Yeah. Yes. Oh, okay. It's rebranding. So it still... sounds like it's like one of these internet channels, but it's real TV. It's real TV, and it's TV. We get to say shit. Yeah. We get oh, to yeah. bleep out a yeah. fuck. Yeah, yeah. it's, it's pretty... exciting to me. Yeah. I, I've I've had several. I got I got projects going that were, where the big you know like I I'm not allowed to talk about them yet because yeah. then you do a thing. But but like uh, there's there right. The, I'm very excited about. Uh, what What do you mean you're not allowed? Yeah, to let's talk drop about some about fucking like, hints, man. I mean, man. like what What's the worst that's gonna happen if you start take it away? talking about? They it? will. 
but they'll it'll, take it away. It'll be fine. I don't. I don't know. I just know like what people, people should, like you should try and see. They if like they'll their, take it away. <laughs> I've 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 tried. The, I've done my twenty years of seeing what the worst could, that could happen <laughs> is if I say stuff. And you're still here. I know. So, so like what's now, the, what are you afraid well, it's of? Like Kevin Smith just said uh, to me uh, when I was talking to him. He's like, because he's going vegan because he just had his heart attack, and he's like, he's got friends that are like, whoa, is it now just because you have a heart attack, you're a pussy. <laughs> It's like, yeah. I ate meat forever. I'm now interested in vegetables. He's not like, he's not like, hit me with your best shot. He's like, I, I now have polio. <laughs> I mean, I'm just like, no, it's, an, I mean, I'm, I'm tired, man. I'm Gandalf the, the, uh, beyond gray. It looks like Spencer's wearing t- the table as shorts. I am. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, Anyone's wearing a table they're sitting at. Anyways, I was just gonna say that that like tomorrow's tomorrow's Emmys and certainly tomorrow's shows that I want to watch are they're being produced by like a really big A list. The people. Emmys are on tomorrow. Oh, God damn it! Yeah, it, tomorrow like the royal tomorrow. <sighs> non <laughs> non English majors, am I right? <laughs> Um, uh, the <laughs> the royal tomorrow. I, can't, I, just, I just wanted to finish my little, my little, my little. I uh, was talking about bumpy yeah. burgers, and you moved on. What was so great about bumpy yeah. burgers? What happened there? We had bumpy something. Burgers. We were talking yeah, yeah. about. Oh, well, I didn't yeah, they know had, you something. had something. They like, had something. How do you Rob's know she married. wasn't patronizing you? You don't know that. I I was interested. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Well, you know, I have. It's one a weird fan. form of burger. I'll give you two more minutes on bumpy burgers. No, I don't want to talk Start. about it anymore. Okay, I was. Gonna, I'm, you know, I'm, I like to move around, you know, organically. Yeah, so you got a second. Thing. Anyways, by the way, my little joke. I, I now I have to call it a joke, and then I have to tell it, and it's just like this is the worst. Well, I was just going to say this little quote. I was going to say, well, no, I do. I do have to. Do you need to- I'm not stopping you. you Please do. The, the L.A. story where she has to finish the shave and a haircut on the tuba, uh, like you know. But did she have to? That's why, I, I mean, it needs, I laughed at it because I knew she had to. I, I got it. I knew she had to finish her shave and a haircut. I, I, I don't remember this. I'm not going to, okay, I'm not going to finish my joke. I didn't want you to not finish it. And you know what? It wasn't a joke. It was just a stupid turn of phrase. It was just dumb. I wasn't even, I was making it up <laughs> as I went. And it's just, but I don't like getting interrupted. Uh, but, but it's like, well, then why do I have mm. a, a, a show uh, 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 if I don't like getting interrupted? What's going on? You know what I would there? do? Are we on a pirate ship? Why, where is it? Why is everything creaking? We are taking on water. <sighs> if I didn't want to get interrupted, you know what I'd do is just never talk. Yeah. Uh. Well, that's white. It works for me. Right. right? Or, or you could be a man. That helps also. <laughs> oh yeah, um, but what do you? What, what are your aspirations? Because now, now, do you know? I mean, you have to. You you have to wait and see. Are you? Is your job a guarantee on season two, or do you just wait and like? You're, no, that, I, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Uh-huh, uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> the gl- the glimmer in in the eye was. You have to pay five dollars a month to see that. <laughs> the the true confidence of a of, of a staff writer that nailed it in season one. <laughs> yeah, uh, I think you're looking at a story editor. <laughs> um, uh, well, that's cool. But and then and then like long mid mid midterm ambitions like like if if Gronish uh, keeps going for years and years and years, do you see yourself, uh, you know? gaining more levels in that or do you are you chomping at champing at the bit to um are you I mean, champing at the bit champing. Yeah, i changed I am it champing she went to private bit. school so it's, it's it, she knows it's champing <laughs> but champing sounds wrong because everyone says chomping right they don't know it's just like fort instead of forte yes exactly like that shit drives me nuts <laughs> yeah it drives me nuts too why don't you go draw something? Draw a cube in perspective. Do you guys remember that game, <laughs> Draw Something? You played well, it on your yeah, phone? Yeah, with friends. That was, yeah. Yeah, I was pretty addicted to I that. was the best. The only time I would ever lose is when it was Asterix, which is like some fucking cartoon character in Deutschland or something. And it's just like, it's not a real word. So how could you guess something that's a, a made-up word? You could never guess that. You ever, anyway, you ever play that game? I don't know what it. I don't know what it's called because I've only. It's just like a. It's not like a 
thing you buy mm -hmm. at Toys R Us, but it's like a game where you, it's like a party game where you, everyone writes a phrase, mm -hmm. and then you pass the stack of papers, and then you look at the phrase, and then you draw crosswords, the phrase, STDs, I've heard of that and game. then you pass that, yeah. and it's like a telephone game that comes back around to you. So you write Ghostbusters on the top sheet, and then you hand it off, and you get like. Uh, pudding pops or whatever, and you and you, you write pudding you, pops. You try to draw pudding pops because okay. that's what you're reading. You got it wrong, and, uh, and well, no, and, if you're past pudding pops. I want. I, anyways, it comes back around, and you've got. You, you're like, well, I, I wrote Ghostbusters, and then this is how Amanda drew Ghostbusters, and because that's what she drew, this is what the next person wrote, and then and it's kind of it's really fun. Oh, I get. I have not played. But Are I there other movies besides Ghostbusters that you can write down? Yeah. Pudding Pops. Yeah. I, just, I haven't seen that. Ghostbusters was, we tried, our friend KK was so drunk that we were like, there's always a one drunk person in the game that like either ruins it or makes it yeah. like worth playing, depending on how you look at it. But like my friend Dino just wrote Ghostbusters. He's like, it's a movie with a logo. Even if you draw it badly, then the next person will. And then it, it went through KK and it was like, it, it came out as like this, like there were guys like pointing things at a giant peanut and it was crying. And <laughs> it's just such a great game. Cause then the next person is like a giant peanut. And then you're like, you have to, uh, it's, it's so fun. We should make a phone version of it. Or we should we should we should we should have a society that if, effectively reproduces the effects, so that by the 21st century we're almost dead. Let's talk about politics a little <laughs> bit. What do you, you're a, you're a, you're a millennial. What, are you hopeful or are you like stocking canned goods? I you know actually so one of the one of the writers in our room she was telling us how she and her husband had just bought gas masks and was like didn't see everyone to go buy a gas mask. So I was like, okay, so I went to Amazon and they were like 80 bucks, which was like a little more than I felt like like if it had been like 45 <laughs> or 50. What I if, what, what it. if like say a friend of yours yeah. had an an extra gas mask and you wanted to try it out? Oh god. Well, would you be like you know a cheapy it, pee pee if you you know what it made me realize that i didn't want to spend if i wasn't willing to spend 80 dollars on a gas mask i was like i think if i need a gas mask i'd like to be dead i was like i don't want to be here yeah. if we have to run around in gas masks i hope i go out and the i don't want i don't want to have to have you're a gonna bunker. breathe it in you're gonna be like i just uh, want to breathe it and then i'll go my only thought about that's how i feel about a nuclear strike like yeah. i'm not gonna get in the car and head for right. uh prim <laughs> nevada so that i can have half a face <laughs> for 10 years i'm just i'm gonna like run to the impact point and like yeah. try to catch the missile in my teeth because i want to like die in a flash um but gas mask i don't know i don't want because the way you die by things that that kill you by inhaling them make you suffer yeah i want to I, I i might buy a gas mask so i can make it to my gun i don't have Jesus. a gun i don't know i was like i don't have enough stuff like, i bought a like, gun when I, trump got elected did you I don't. I just feel like that is part of the problem. It's part. No, it's not part White of the problem. White fragility. It is. It, it is. <laughs> I've, I've 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 realized it all now, but I still got the gun. What did you What did you think you would need the gun for? Like, what What made you like? What did you think would happen to now shoot his dogs? Weirdly, now. Well, there's that. I mean, <laughs> he's always they, talking about shooting his dogs these days. Really, really, really. No, all the, shot, really? All the time. Don't put a nickel really? in him. Really. Every day he's like, I gotta shoot all these the dogs. You could shoot you're gonna shoot your two dogs well i don't i don't want to derail this but like at the end of the world if i'm about to kill myself i don't want my dogs to well i guess they you... i guess they could eat me and there's a, i guess i could leave them to eat me and they'd have a couple days of ground chuck to have fun with i, I but like i i was just thinking like i'll just That's kill you know chuck. everybody that, that loves needed, me that needed context the killing but dog. but no it's not for suicide <laughs> it's for it was for the gu the gun was definitely uh, overall the most accurate description of it w which is my new favorite phrase cuz they're just like holy shit what a wake up of like that, like white fragility it was like i have never had this level of experience unlike basically all women all people of color, all people of any identifiable demographic as vanilla man. Which, <laughs> while I thought I was an underdog and I thought I was badass, I thought I was punk rock. <laughs> I thought I was an anarchist, I, as in let's bring the anarchy. Like, 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 and, and then like I saw my girlfriend crying after an election, and I was like, w 
I can't, stop crying, <laughs> you know, and like, and then that's why tears, you bought the gun. Tears didn't. Yeah, stop. he was like, stop crying. And 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 I was like, and then, and then and then the and then the waitress came over and she had been crying, and then the women were hugging, and then and and I was like, uh, and and then I'm like talking to the other guys and going like, uh, but then but then I gotta most shoot of all, my dogs. I gotta was, go home was, right now. It was like, it was like and shoot my was so dogs. Now we've come back to I'm I'm convinced of it again. Like I'm back to like yeah, thinking we're entering it's the again. But but in the days after the election, I was like, this is happening fast. Yeah. And by this, I mean unidentifiable total um, destabilization. Like how hard is it going to be for a guy that can um, uh, the first guy to go out of business in Las Vegas owning a <laughs> casino? Um, like, like, how hard is it going to be for this guy with an already unstable global uh, economy to to just like provoke a polarity shift that just crumbles everything? I didn't even think at the time of like, oh, you know, these racists are going to start clockwork oranging, and then everyone's going to like get mad. And now, what I'm scared of is that the Mueller report is going to come out, and it's like. We already know, like he's got. It's going to be he's a criminal, yeah. and now we have a constitutional crisis, and then it's going to be. I'm genuinely like just as a, just a fan theory. <laughs> Civil war is going to happen because like there's going to be street to street like yeah. fighting, people going like, and so. But my <laughs> the reason I bought the gun is because I'm like, it's a power tool right. that I don't have. That like a flashlight is for an earthquake, and. <laughs> Um, and, a, and, a, and, a, and, a, and a drill is for making a bird feeder, and, and, and I don't have one of those things that knocks the people down that saw your sparklets bottles. Like, like I, I, that, 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 that and it's, if I didn't have a girlfriend, I don't know if I, because I'd be like, well, what am I, uh, uh, Tex Avery? I'm going to like, <laughs> like, like enjoy protecting my empty gun with my, its last 11 bullets. I, I, it, it, You're going to draw a droopy dog. I, 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 it's, it's, it's a home invasion, uh, white fragility, like fear of impotence, like, like, yeah. like, like, like the worst death in the world would be yeah. not being able to protect my loved ones. Yeah. Like that's, and then it's like, there's this product and it's like, I'm exactly the part of the problem. That's why everyone has yeah. a gun. Yeah. I mean, I, I've. I remember right after the election and I was talking to my dad, like I was sobbing and I was talking to my dad, or I think it was a couple of days later, was probably still sobbing. And I asked how my grandmother was, my 85 year old grandmother. And he was like, she seems fine. <laughs> and I was like, oh yeah, like she used to, like they used to just like black people walk down the street and then you just never saw them again. And so part of it was like when I, she, when I talked to her and she was like, yeah, no, I hate him. This is terrible. Also, she's like old, so I think also at that point you're like, I don't know, whatever. Um, she's like, ice on a porch could be my yeah, Donald Trump. Exactly. But um, I did think about that. I was like, you know, it's it's been worse. So, like, it, there's that. Um, but I've also had to, like, I don't know, like, I've had to really narrow the shit that I can, like, really, really care about because I feel like all this other stuff takes so much energy just to, like, absorb it and want it. And, like, I don't want to ignore it. And so I've had to be, like, there's, like, five things I can care about in a real way. And then I have to, like, pay attention to all this other shit because it feels necessary to pay attention because there's so much. And even now I'm, like, I don't even – there's shit that I don't – like, names that I see and I don't really – I know that it's, like, a bad thing or there's a – you know, scandal, but I don't really know what it is. Um, so as a millennial, I feel, <laughs> <laughs> um, I weirdly actually feel, I feel okay going into the midterms. I feel very like just, just okay though. Like not on either side of it, just like really solidly. Okay. Yeah. Um, and I think it's just cause like, I have to feel okay. Otherwise mm -hmm. like it's just, yeah, cause the alternative is going like, cause I, I went through that phase where I was like, these guys are all acting like there aren't going to be free and fair elections in 2018. They still kind of are, um, but now it's. I, I mean, I'm not, and I'm not. I'm not arguing. No, I'm not I'm, saying. I'm, that I'm still willing to win. believe in the worst nightmare. Sure. But, yeah. But now there's this other theory because the behavior has become so incredibly like clownish that I'm like, oh, well, maybe they are just. They just thought. They just. They're just dumb. Like I know they're. They were always dumb, but like not dumb and knew something that I didn't. Like maybe they're just 
idiots. I think most of the people who knew stuff seem like they're kind of gone. Like, it feels like mostly idiots left. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like the people that knew stuff were like, oh, this shit we knew, the jig is up. We can't leave yeah. a paper trail. Like, and, and, and he's just like, you're fired, you're fired, you're fired. Yeah. And it's like, those are all the people that were like, either A, um, just want to uh, say, I don't. I think this might be illegal <laughs> later. And, oh, and or the people that were like, we should do this illegal thing. Like both categories of people. That's a really interesting way of looking at yeah. it. Like he's like, he's just, but is that like, it's just this absurd thing about like, he's just like the, your fired guy. And now he's yeah. just, you're firing. He's it's hot. like, he, like is, could, could you become Caesar that way? Could you just <laughs> fire every Roman senator and then fire the, the executive branch and fire the, oh wait, no, that's me. Okay. Uh, I'll hire, I'll promote the executive branch. I'm going to fire this, uh, the, 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 the you gotta fire the constitution like is he just gonna he fire that i'm sure he th i bet you he thinks he can like fire a supreme court judge firing is the only thing he's ever done yeah. that my dad would call running a business like my dad <laughs> who's like an actual businessman like like i think i bet that's the only thing he's ever done that was like i bet he's never filed taxes or like yeah. checked a, a cashed a check or like put balanced the ledger or or like looked at a pie chart like I, but he's just he's just fired people <laughs> he's just he thinks it's just like anyways well uh i think if we, i think if we can i think if after the midterms i don't feel like i feel like talk to me again after that yeah because if, if i still feel this shitty like next january then it's like and assuming maybe we flipped things then it's like oh we're super fucked so yeah but you'll have made a lot of pasta by then i've made a lot of pasta by then <laughs> i you, will that's gotta be you think that's a thing that's like a phenomenon in america is like people have these trump hobbies they're like yeah. fucking if it's gonna be four years i might as well take up bonsai tree farming or like something no i think and people gained a lot of weight apparently after the election they were yeah. just like i stayed home for weeks just yeah, like I put on food. a lot of weight, and then in 2018, and then I was like, I'm gonna start working out, and I, and also buying. A, I think, I think absolutely, like everybody, like that's why I started. We're all gonna. Out. There's gonna be like some equivalent of the baby boom, but instead of just being a population explosion, it's gonna be like a weird hobby yeah. explosion. <laughs> like, like what? How come there's so many more stamp collectors that are aged 40 in 2030? Well, because it traces back right. to this panic people had that they were missing out on the smaller things in life. Right. All these CrossFit gyms. <laughs> like every day, I see new one of those. That's probably. Probably yeah. Response. Yeah. I mean, there seems, I don't know. The people I know that go to gym say that the drop off that happens at the beginning of the year hasn't really happened so far, which is interesting. I don't know. Do you want to meet my, my black friend that has your last name? Oh yeah. Um, I who, might know him. Oh yeah. Did you, did you meet him before the show or do you, do you might do you? No, I just, you know, I think we, it's a, yeah. you guys all know each other yeah. because you know, what's fun. You know, what's shitty. Okay. I'm going to say this because it, like we don't all black people don't, but it's hard because right. like in Hollywood, I'm learning, like I have met, I'm going to say probably 60%. Well, in Hollywood, you do black know a people lot of people. And I haven't even been doing it that long. I mean, just because there's not that many. And so it's one of those things where I'm like, yeah, I do know that person and I don't want to tell you that because you're asking me for that I have reason. that conversation constantly now because yeah. I'm not all it's it's almost like a social custom that I'm not allowed to I have to I go like oh do, uh, Asian person do you know Randall Park right. and, 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 and they're like of course I know Randall Park I go I figured you did but I'm not allowed to right. <laughs> right. <laughs> and, uh, all right well let's bring up Demorge Brown no relation <laughs> Demorge Brown. Demorge Brown. Sitting down. Demorge Brown. Sitting down. Give us a Demorge Brown rap. Demorge Brown. Sitting here. down. Demorge Brown. Sitting down. Go to the sit down. To the M O R G E. Sitting down with me. Demorge. That was Brown. great. That was great. The blood keep, is keep in the your, water. Keep your freestyles short, like little little punctuations, <laughs> and you'll you like you'll get through them. What's going on? I'm all right. What the, I, <laughs> yeah, what else right. was That's Mayville like? Anything new? Uh, not similar to just working, 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 working. We don't know each other, by the way. Okay, no, we yeah. don't know each other. Do you? But uh, now we do. So yeah. Uh oh. Do you want? Do you want to share any of your work? Uh, my stuff personally, I'm just still writing really weird sort of shorts. Um, it's a weird thing where it's like Fela Kuti at a uh, children's show, and it's a cold open, 
of the cold of, of the of the show. So it's a puppet and Fela Kuti. This so is something, thing. something you're writing on spec? Uh, no, no, it's just my thing. It's just part of my sort of on, on, ongoing sort of realm of shorts that are ideas I want to see executed that nobody ever. Do ever you write will every day? Do you get up at like a certain uh, and get right to it, or uh, it's every day is different for me. So like, uh, but at some point every day I sit down and uh, write in some form. I mean, yeah, absolutely. Me too. Every day. Every that day. I mean, like Stephen King. I. That's what they call me. You know that motherfucker <laughs> writes every day. I read on writing. That's why I know. Oh. I was, uh, somebody told me something. I think it was. I think it was my partner in my other podcast, uh, 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 Jessica, Jessica Gao. Gao. Uh, she quoted something from that book that I thought was really profound, and then I immediately forgot. But. It sounds like I, I, that's that's the first time I've heard somebody like oh, yeah. Uh, like yeah Stephen King's on writing sounds like a, it's a great inspirational book. book. You know he almost died. I didn't know that. Yeah, oh, he got hit car by thing? a car. Yeah. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. I uh, I I had a girlfriend in Milwaukee who uh, bragged to me that she went out to his place one time and stole one of his gargoyles. And I to this day, like when I see him on Twitter, I feel, I feel like should I tell him? <laughs> Because it's like the world changed you then. It's like back him. in Milwaukee in the 90s, it was like, ha, Stephen King. It's a guy has names on a book on your bookshelf, and you <laughs> stole his gargoyle. And it's like the world just like tesseracted. And, and now he's like just there. If I mention him, he might go, I like Rick and Morty. I'm like, my girlfriend stole your gargoyle. <laughs> you should tell him. You got to tell him. I don't know. It's, it's not my piece to make, though. It's it like, is. I didn't do anything. What if you're telling him right now, ladies and gentlemen? <laughs> I love Rick and Morty. Um, do you read a lot of uh, fiction? Do you? Uh, I do. I've I have gone back to reading a lot of fiction because I find that writing is much easier for me when I'm reading something. Like I um, even like a couple months ago, I was just having a hard time like getting words down, and I realized I hadn't read a book in like a month or something like that. So I have, and I'm not working technically, so I got a lot of time. Um, I used to read mostly nonfiction though, but I'm back to fiction. So. I don't read anything. Yeah, I can't even read. I, feel like I, I can't. It's like it's that Twitter thing. Like I can't read anything longer than a bumper sticker anymore. Like my brain. Oh my god. Oh. That's Bumpy Burger executives are <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's starting to. What happened? We'll find out. What's going on? What happened? We're gonna conduct a thorough internal review. Did anybody see what happened? I think it was. Yeah. Oh. Hmm. Fucking gel clips. <laughs> well, the heavier things are mounted very securely. Okay. okay. Um, Demorge, are you? Or how are you emotionally and spiritually? And uh, uh, I'm good. I'm good. Um, exhausted. I put a lot of pressure on myself this year to kind of like crack something open and make something happen in this town. But I uh, can I but, help it anyway? I I suppose I mean it's your choice. Right? Well, as a, I don't know, as a, like yeah, I don't I don't know the answer either. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I just I mean I, all you can do is be who you are and do what you're doing. And, <laughs> and, and, and but but I mean but I'm not. What else are you supposed to do? You know? Yeah, that that was either the royal you like like everybody can either can or that was you do you Harmon. Uh, I'll take no, some I mean, money. Yeah, well, that would help me. I don't have any. Oh, okay. Like I, I don't know. Offering. I don't know if you saw the headlines, but Rick and Morty's in limbo. Um, I, I, I I didn't see the headlines. What Rick did they and say? Morty's in limbo. It's not in limbo. It's the where he's negotiating, it's a a, negotiating a contract, and I so I. You're I, still negotiating. I said to the five thousandth kid that tweeted me, "Hey, you fat, lazy alcoholic, stop um, being so slow writing the scripts." Like, because they're fifteen, and they, I understand that they don't know how TV works. I just don't understand why they're so horrible. Why are they so mean? Why are they so? There's not. You can't. When when community fans would go, I'm upset right now because. Annie kissed Jeff instead of Britta. I would go, first of all, you're, you're crazy because you're upset with me and they're fictional characters. But second of all, that's how I feel about TV too. Thank you for the biggest compliment in the world, which is total immersion in my narrative. And I get it. I understand uh, the, the compliment on this. I get it. These kids that are like, like, uh, hey, you it's like, it's like yeah. I go, hey, I got a, 
I ate a cupcake today. And they're like, why don't you fucking stop eating cupcakes and write the fucking show, you piece of shit? And I was like, what? We skipped the part where you like it, even. Like, like it's crazy. Clearly you do. Or you Is didn't. there a world where th that would work? <laughs> <laughs> like a kid would go, will you stop eating cupcakes? And you'd write the script, and you read. And it would just write the went, show, even though it hasn't been ordered by the network, which is why now the trades. Because now I, I yelled at a fifteen-year-old, like it hasn't been ordered. And and then, so that would, it's like I just I can see on the on the on the absolute vodka sponsored sidebars of like the <laughs> websites where I'm tr I was trying to like. Uh, procrastinate. It's like I just I see like my name and I see Rick and Morty thumbnails. I'm like, ah, you did it again. Um, and uh, but but like, uh, yeah. Is there a universe where a kid saying that would make me write a season of Rick and Morty by myself? <laughs> Uh, without getting together with Justin, oh, Justin, like, hey, Justin, I'm gonna, I'm just, you know what? This is taking so long. I'm gonna just start writing the show because you're gonna have to write it anyway. Right, exactly. And, and you know what? if we have to change it, we'll still have a head start. Fade in. Rick's like, oh, I love inventing stuff, and I was like, 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 <laughs> yeah, no, I don't, I don't see if there was a world where that was going to happen. I think maybe the kid would be saying something along the lines of. I have Lou Gehrig's disease, and I'd love to see a <laughs> script of Rick and Morty before I die. And obviously, that's not go I'm not going to get to see the show. Maybe not. Hey, you piece of shit! <laughs> um, yeah. You're fat. This is why your wife left you. Like, Jeez. like they dig into my personal oh, life. Yeah. And yeah. and, and I'm, 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 like like how, you don't know how TV works, and you don't know what I. I this is you're 15. So you're supposed to be dumb, but you're not supposed to have this hubris. This is dangerous. I guess this is what all old people have said about young people forever. Internet people are scary, though. We used to get crazy emails at Jezebel. Like, every day it was like... Well, Jezebel like, terrifies me. So I can see, yeah. yeah, I mean, like, I can't imagine all the... the... Time. Um, but people are very bold. That's because, you know, you got to, like, offer to meet them. Spencer's, like, Spencer's way of putting it, which I thought was very accurate, because uh -oh. it kind of like, it's like the internet has stripped shame from the species, and that has resulted in amazing things, like, uh, f the, and, and evil things. Like, it has, you, you can it's now. It's provided focus and comfort groups for, like, people with leprosy. <laughs> and stuff like people. very serious things like uh you know that people have had to live in isolation from and and had terrible stigma about how could you successfully have raised and transgender consciousness without the internet when the very thing about it that that is used to oppress is that is that there's not strength in numbers there's not like you know you're not going to have a million transgender march and probably people will yell at me for that but 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 i just i i mean that in a in a, in a way of saying like like we shouldn't have to wait for that and like like it's like it's that's how amazing the internet is is that we can go oh there's there's it doesn't matter it doesn't it doesn't have to be mob rule or anything but it's like and then the fucking exact same thing happened with nazis they they're just like oh yeah yeah no shame like like no, no, yeah like totally like <laughs> i more than no shame there's also like an like an invitation to to this myth of like that your your every thought is an opinion and every opinion matters and should be because there's always a cursor it's just it became free it went from being this expensive technology that gutenberg developed on the set of cocoon and uh <laughs> my references are getting so are older than the uh. first gutenberg um <laughs> it was like, like like yeah it was it was like lasers to have to print a newspaper or leave a comment on something and then it became like Anything to say in this Farmville move? Yeah, I hate remember, black people. Well, there you go. It's, now it's in Farmville font. Remember back in the comic book days where people would snail mail the shit that you get comments on now? Yeah. Like we would get in Milwaukee, somebody went, hmm, I'm going to write Hello. this shitty comment uh, down. I, I think suppose you're wondering why I would take pen to paper your, under your such circumstances. Sucks. However, it's it permits me to make trailer. a bit of an introduction. First of all, a few words about myself. I am a, what they call a militant virgin. I am proud <laughs> to say your comic book has given me very much guidance through this. However, I object to the principles at hand. Now, second of all, in regards to issue three, yeah, and it would just, it would have a, you'd have to put a stamp on it. Walk to the mill. That box. person had to ha had to need to put cardio into their fucking <laughs> parasitism.
There's an entitlement thing too, because I find that if, like, if I tweet something and then someone responds back with some bullshit, and I'm like, I wasn't asking you a fucking question, <laughs> yeah. and they're like, well, then why'd you tweet it? And I'm like, <laughs> just because I tweet something is not an invitation for your dumbass opinions, and they think that just putting anything out there is like now I get to respond to it, and it's you, like, I have the right to, and you have to respond to me, and if you didn't want people to like come at you about it you shouldn't have said it and it's like nobody was, I was talking to you yeah it's not a conversation it's not I a con I'm not having a conversation with any of you people <laughs> yeah <laughs> I don't want you to read my posts <laughs> I mean, like, every once in a while, and this is a fun way to use Twitter, every once in a while, I'll go like, hey, I need shorts. Uh, you know, like, like anybody got any? Or I found a drone in my yard. Does anyone know whose it is? And, like, the internet snaps out. So it's like, yeah, there's very specific points when, as a primate, you could recognize when someone wants information from you. And, it, if, and if we keep defining it as when a cursor is blinking underneath what they're saying, we're going to die. <laughs> Right. Well, that's the problem is because that our behavior in, is shaped by uh, technology and the options it kind of conveys because it's like we can obviously do a million things, but internets and websites, they present a number of options and so they limit it. And so you're not thinking, oh, commenting is not something I have to worry about, but then it gives you an option. It's like, would you like to comment? This is something you should consider doing. And right. it's like, well, no, you shouldn't consider commenting every time you see a box that says comment. That would be absurd. <laughs> well, I don't know if they ever, uh, 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 like, like, I noticed that the people that are writing for online publications and stuff, they they started having to put in their, like, TV reviews and stuff. Like, like they ha they, they have to end their paragraph with, like, did you think uh, uh, the yeah, episode of Blackish was uh, a little inflammatory? What do you think? It's like, 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 no, don't, yeah. don't tell them. They, they need to be ashamed. Yeah, I they, did not. I did not like the comments. I, know, I, I, like the just any benefit. I mean, it was nice when people like stuff, and sometimes people gave you corrections, and sometimes it was helpful. But like, it the negative far outweighed any of the positive and like it was always this thing of like professionalism like if we if they would like people would comment stuff on on articles and they'd be just smart asses and then we would respond back like smart asses because you're you right. came in being a dick and like i can be a dick too and then they're like well this is really unprofessional right. and it's like you just call like you just called me <laughs> stupid also i don't work for or with you and this is not a service so there's no professionalism yeah, to no be had between store. you and i because we're like I, it's me and my coworkers, and I'm not providing a service to you. We're just putting this shit out there, and you're choosing to read it. And like, I, I just, if we could have every day, I would ask our editor. Like, it became a joke where I was like, "Can we, can we get rid of the comments today? Can oh. we get rid of the comments?" I'm like, no. If day? we get rid of the comment section, then we're competing with websites that have comment yeah. sections, and there's a certain. I don't know who the fuck these people are, but there's they're a sizable percentage of the audience that, like, they like to comment. Yeah. So if Jezebel removes their comment section and Hezebel doesn't, Hezebel, <laughs> I guess, gets that 10%, 20% yeah. of, of readers. I, it, it, and it's so we're terrified. But then, and I, I just, I, oh, man. I mean, this is how, like, journalism, seeing the Internet and going, what do we do, is 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 the whole reason why we're in everything now <laughs> because instead of going we need to double down on journalistic standards and like basically elitism cuz i'm sure we sound like elitists right now to somebody who's like i leave a lot of comments what makes you so better aren't you uh doesn't does, isn't kara's job to comment on society and then i leave a comment under her comment on culture and like now i'm an asshole because i'm just a plebe well I, I guess part of me wants to just go, yeah, let's end that argument. You are a plebe. Like your 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 fucking thought process is horrible. Like you didn't <laughs> you didn't want to spend any more than the three hours it took you to write these two paragraphs about like how she's technically being unfair. It's like you're you're not you don't you don't really hurt as much for this as 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 the person you're commenting on does. So yeah, elitism, I guess. But like, well, they're doing work. You commenting isn't it, like it. It wasn't. It's not like it just came to mind. It's like I wrote something. I spent time on it. Someone else read it. It was checked. Like I was doing. 
I was doing something. Yeah. And that's but even like, but you and I agree that even on Twitter where we're not doing work, if true. I'm just like, I like hey, I don't like I don't like banana splits. I, 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 if, 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 here's the here's the here's the replies I enjoy. <laughs> um, a, a smart, fun person saying like banana splits are the uh are the blank of blank like like maybe it's a swing and a miss but it's like they tried and it's like they're they're yes anding they're go they're, you know they're not here's the ones i don't like uh uh they're they're technically not banana splits that's a fallacy or whatever the fuck haven't that you tried shit. the banana split at the other place <laughs> or or like or yeah. like just repeating the joke <laughs> like 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 uh, i can't give an example of that because bananas i don't like banana splits isn't a joke but 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 like they, where they just like repeat it and it's like you, it makes you wonder if like they knew like, like, like so, so what do you think i am do you think i'm just a guy just like making noise so you're, and now you're making a joke it, i just i and i put a flow chart i pinned it to my twitter profile <laughs> I I, 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 I I graphed it out where you can walk through it. If you read a tweet, you can walk through the flow chart when deciding whether or not you should reply. And it's it's pretty it's pretty well thought out if I give if I do say so myself. How long did it take you to make the flow chart? I'm I'm not gonna comment on that until I turn this script in. Um <laughs> the but it's like and then I, I posted it, I was like, there we go. You know that's good. Then, <laughs> then like I, I don't have to get mad at people anymore because I can even if anything I can just reprint the flowchart. Everybody looked at the flowchart and because I they like eighty percent of the people were like, ha, ha, oh, how do you know when you finish? Or <laughs> like they were like they thought it was a board game or like <laughs> they thought it was like a flowchart of whether or not I will respond to their tweet. This is this is so there used to be in in my opinion there used to be a gear of hesitation in that so shame you would see something <laughs> yeah really shame or stigma you want to but there's a fear where... of being expelled from the fig tree of monkeys because <laughs> you suck <laughs> fear of that the reflex and the opinion are not the same thing so you have a reflexive action or a response to something and your first was your, your there used to be a check that sort of said all right let me just be ashamed for not just a second right away let this let this opinion form let me think about what and then if it if it became something that you had solidified you could you would post that if it was if there was enough base but now to overcome the shame sort of acid like, you had a milkshake yeah that sort of gag reflex is gone and now people just kind of go ah, ah, like that right away yeah here's something right. that i because is in my and head and and, and, I, and it's like i and the and 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 you can never again sh you can't say to the person like well you don't even know how to bell and you're like yelling at me that's long gone we're in the middle of an of a anti-intellectual revolution the president is like i i i, I, I he spells cats dogs <laughs> people don't read anything also is something i've learned because i would get comments and it's like they're commenting on something i'm like it is literally in the thing i just wrote right. but you made it halfway through and then you got pissy and then you went in and left a comment and if you had just finished reading the fucking article the exact thing question that you have was answered and i mean even with twitter i feel like people like i'll get responses i'm like are you understanding what i just said I don't think you're understanding this or you're not reading this clearly. People, and the irony is that underneath it all, people just want to be heard and connect, but they can't then turn that into empathy and go, oh, I guess that's how everyone feels, so maybe don't, like, go into this YouTube video of someone's daughter doing ballet and go, she looks a little fat. Like, <laughs> like, 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 because the reason you're saying that is that that's your pirouette. Like, that's <laughs> you wanting praise on a YouTube video from your dad that doesn't exist, and it's like, it's insane that you can't... It, like we, we eh, anyways. We'll, let's do this to save, 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 save you guys from my maelstrom. What's what's good about the modern world? What's what do we like about it? <laughs> oh, it used man. to be worse in some ways. Yeah. You the, see those those beer bottles that the mountain turns blue if it's cold. Holy shit! <laughs> <laughs> That's the perfect temperature to drink beer. What is really my therapist always makes me do this like what's good what's what what is good even if it's just in your personal life like oh well you, you're you're easy you, yeah. you're you're on a fucking streak that's yeah. what's good you don't even give a shit about yeah, us no. <laughs> you just like you, you're like I wonder if I get a parking space next season. <laughs> I hope Kenya's not listening. No, okay. um, no, I mean it's. I think I have to remember that at least for a black person, it's better to be alive anytime in the future than in the past. Right. Most likely. 
So it's better now than to 20 years ago. So I guess there's that, <laughs> you know? Seriously. Yeah, <laughs> like it. it's, yeah. Yeah. It's hard it's not all, to yeah. be positive about it because you can't be nostalgic about it. No, still not great. Yeah. No, but I, it's like I would rather be alive now than 60 years ago. But I think when, so. along those lines, one of the things is that the representations of what we see are more specific now because you can't hide behind this idea that, oh, people only want to see this type of family on TV or that kind of thing. So you're talking about the Huxtables. And that was, for me, that was like one of the first times that I saw situations that were reflective of my own life. And people would come up and say, well, it's not, it's not a real family or it's not a this or it's not a that. I know plenty of families through my parents and through my, you know, other just circles where black lawyer, black doctor, black whatever, black, black realtor, black whatever, um, who had friends and had the best parts for me of the Cosby shows would be at the end when the guest star would have been a, um, a musician of amazing note, but that I didn't know. I didn't know who Betty Carter was until that episode where she came in and they give her 10 minutes at the end of the show to sing a song as part of the narrative, that kind of stuff. And so for me as a kid, I go, I don't know who that is, but that song is amazing. Wait for the credits to roll, write the name down, go to the library right after that, realize who this woman is and, and how amazing she was. And that show just had constantly had that kind of stuff. And, and so I think that now what's happening is uh, so much stuff is happening so much faster and you have kids whose vision of the world is, is, is several increments faster than the people who are trying to create entertainment for them because the, now people are trying to match up with these kids in the way that they see the world. And the internet is one way that you see that. I mean, you have to kind of... Yeah. If we can last another 30 years, we have we are living through a tipping point where the syndrome that we've been grappling with will will have been overcome. Yeah. Right? Like like we can all agree on that. It's just but now it's a question ironically of if we if we are here in 30 years, yeah. if we could have what we have today plus now now that we got now that we got a Shonda and then therefore are going to have the 10 Shonda imitators and the 500 like Shonda inspirees and, and the, and the blah, 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 like not just confining it to that topic, mm -hmm. but keeping it on theme for this episode. But like, like it, that plus 20 years equals boom, I think we're done. Mm -hmm. And, but, and the, but the, it's, it, is that why? So we're, it's like, we're having a fever. Cause we're like, we're like, it's getting too close to that. It's like, 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 I don't, I don't, I don't like all this talk about, uh, like, like I, I don't, I keep hearing that I'm white and I just don't like it. And it's like <laughs> making me uncomfortable. Like I'd never heard that before. I, it's like, wait, do you mean I'm bad? I, I don't know what that means. Like I, I haven't been called white outside of like a Richard Pryor album in like, <laughs> And and, and and like so like we're and, and so America is just like it's having this seismic fucking conniption fit precisely because things because we're in the bubble right now because, now, because we're, things are almost there we're in a place now where you can't you, it's a lot harder to walk around and go like I don't know what that is or I don't know what that term is or everything is changing so fast and they're just throwing these words around. you now have to learn the vocabulary people are learning that there is a place for themselves in, in, in this world and they're choosing their own definitions and then they're forcing you to learn the label because what I'm excited about which I don't think other white people understand about as far as changing times under our feet is that if you if, if it feels like a conveyor belt is making you go like this like yeah your first instinct is something's going wrong stop it from happening but much like with mp3 technology or anything else that is just going to happen um it, the second thing that happens is you now have an unprecedented license to be even more relaxed than you've ever been like you can now like pretty soon if this nightmare that you're worried about where white people are somehow just other people like 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 or and that they're always wrong or there was a, it's like you can now be you could just go like yeah i don't know like like which is like a fun i i like like i don't know what i'm doing i don't oh is that what you call that f form of 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 social custom i certainly wasn't trying to offend anybody i don't know what the fuck is going on i'm just white right i'm a fucking idiot like isn't that a luxury isn't that fun like that's like being in a cruise ship <laughs> 
Excuse me, where's the bathroom? I just took a shit over the rail. I don't know. <laughs> you tell me. I'm just here. I'm just old and dying on a boat. I don't know. I guess I, I don't know why I'm like looking at you guys like, right, right? It's like I have the wrong panel for this. No, it just sounds like business as usual to me. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think, you know what I do think, though? I think, I think white people just also maybe need to relax a little bit. Like, it'll be fine. You'll we get fine, to guys. now. You'll be fine. It's be okay. like not invited to the conversation. Yeah. You don't have to Just... care about Black Panther. Isn't that isn't that fun? Yeah, it's fine. You don't have to. You can't. You can't. You can't make or break a Marvel movie with your Rotten Tomatoes review. Isn't isn't that right. nice? You can take the day off. You don't have to care. I, I guess I'm I'm flaunting my 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 advantage of listening to Jessica Gao for for however many episodes have been doing that show because it's just like that that had to really be drilled into me because i was like, like we were talking about the confederate thing and i was like i'm still like what abouting and like like yeah but we haven't seen the show and i was like isn't this a slippery slope and, and 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 but and then at some point i like 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 i had like this kind of fit of like since we were like this disconnect and i was like yeah but jessica i feel like I feel like I'm Optimus Prime and all the Autobots are coming to me and saying, like, you're Optimus Prime and you're in charge, but we hate you for being in charge. And we we want we want you to stop doing things, but we want you to start doing things different, all this stuff. And she's like, no one said you were Optimus Prime and all this stuff. And it, <laughs> it, it turned into this, like, really weird, like, moment where I was like, wait, so I don't have to have an opinion about Confederate? Yeah. And she's like, no, no, no one asked, no one asked <laughs> for your opinion about it. And I'm like, but, and I'm thinking in my head, but, but yeah, I'm like, yeah, good. Yeah. I don't want to have one. It sounds like a really sticky situation. I'd rather <laughs> just like look at my Twinkie and eat it. Like, like, like what a fucking amazing, I just gained five hours of my work week. I, I don't, I don't have to sound off about fucking Confederate and whether it like, uh, and I, can't you apply that to everything, America? Can't you like, can't you stop? fucking commenting on everything you're not you don't need your feedback is not going to make a difference it's not going to get you a job it's not going to keep anything bad from happening uh you are dumb and you're going to stay dumb and if you're poor you should you should do something that makes money and commenting isn't one of them and if you're rich, then you're gonna you're you're losing money commenting, and you're <laughs> if I mention you're stupid, and uh, and and no one cares. And uh, check I hate out you. the flowchart. Yeah, yeah, just go look at my flowchart. Just look at the flowchart. And don't right. get caught in the loop. Did we did we fill our? Uh... Didn't you promise him two minutes of bumpies? Oh yeah, well, well yes, no, he, he yes, was, he did promise that. Well, I gave it to him like my iPad, and he didn't. Uh, how are, how, he's just sitting on it. How are the, how are the fries at Bumpy's? I like French fries. No, I, but were they what kind of fries were they? They were know, French, like the thin ones. They were thin. They were thin. Wait, you know it's been a long time. Okay. So, I bet you they were thin fries. Okay. Hmm. But I like the French fries. I'm a. I love French fries. Do you like Bumpy Burger more than McDonald's? Yeah, because I drew a logo for it, and uh, I won a competition. Hmm. Oh. How come they didn't put it on a billboard outside they, of town? They well, they didn't put it on a billboard, but they put it on their menu. Oh, that's pretty cool. That is cool. Yeah. That was worth it, wasn't it? Hmm. Yeah, yeah, and we still got a minute <laughs> left. Did we really talk for two hours? No, I just mean to have covered two minutes of Bumpy Burgers. Oh, oh, oh. I mean, no one said the podcast has to be two hours also. What time? No, no one ever is, has ever said that. And most <laughs> people are like, stop making the podcast two hours. Really? You read that stuff? Yeah, I'm at work. I'm already at work, and I want to press pause. i got to press pause. Yeah. Yeah, and that's when we play Dungeons and Dragons, and so we're not going to play it this week. And people so. are always like, "That's the worst part of the show." Spencer hates himself. I don't know why he keeps showing up. It seems like he wants to kill himself. It seems like every time I see Spencer, he's going to kill himself. I don't know why Spencer hates himself so much in everything he does. So maybe that also happens because the show goes on so long. Must be nice to be able to read about yourself on the internet without killing yourself. Oh, it's great. I'm. I'm. I. I've. Yeah, it's great. I definitely want. Have you ever tried typing Dan Harmon into Google and seeing what the autofill says? I know you have. Hey no, no, I haven't. Hey I, <laughs> I mean, the last Up time top. I did was like eight years ago, and it was definitely like Dan. It was like Chevy Chase, Dan Harmon, Chevy Chase, all this stuff. 
Chevy's pissed at me. Oh no! He's pissed at a lot of people. Again. Yeah, but he was. We were friends, and I considered that an accomplishment because I was an asshole to him by doing that voicemail thing, and I I felt like I was mature. And then that article came out with uh, that was about the feature on Donald. And like I I had a quote in there that, and it was like it was like right on the heels of me like having oh, a really nice yeah. conversation with Chevy, and he was like he he hasn't talked to me since. That sucks. <clears throat> What? What? Well, what I don't. Did you I mean, say, what did you do now? What did you do? What did you do now? He said, "Well, the article said that like Chevy recognized Donald's talent and stuff like that, right?" And I never. And it said, "I mean, like, honestly, like all due respect to the writer who wrote a really incredible piece on Donald. So I know he must be a good guy. But like, I did have two conversations with him on the phone where I was like very adamant about how I did not want to dogpile Chevy and was really worried about this quote. And he, it really was kind of assembled out of like weird, like I." I would never ever use the word jealous in reference to an actor because I know that that would it's it's ins, it's I just know that that's like the J word like you don't say yeah so and so was jealous of so and so like especially about actors um and I and I just like ugh, it's just like whatever I just thought I'd, I I had my second I'm a bad interviewer drink and now I'm now I'm in therapy does this mean I'm not going to get my script done Ooh. Oh, damn. Then I get to be miserable for another week. Thanks, Levy. Yeah, Steve's traditionally right in these scenarios. Are you in love, Kara? Not with me. The uh, Netflix series. Uh, no. No relationship? Is, no. That, pro is, that, is that bad form? I'm, I'm no. like, what's going on with you sexually? No. <laughs> Well, you Holy said it like that. God. You said it normal. Yeah, and then I and then you made it weird. Yeah. yeah. Well, Demors, what's going funny. on with you sexually? <laughs> well, I got as close as I could. I said emotionally for Demors. I was like, what's going on, Demors? No, I don't know. Have you have you? Uh, LA's weird. LA's weird. But it's where you're gonna meet like the coolest person in the world, though. Yeah, yeah. I would drive. rather I would rather have um, a, a good script than a boyfriend right now. I think Damn. that's where I'm currently Because <laughs> one could do a lot for me more than the other. Uh, Hell yeah. I, heard, I heard one light clapping from the back of the warehouse. I think your, your publicist is here, maybe. Someone knows. Yes, uh, work a hall. Uh, yeah, well, that's, you're, you're, you're probably uh, 19, I'm not going to ask. You, you, don't, don't, don't rush it. Are uh, you going to ask? No, no. Oh. If you want to know how old Kara Brown is, uh, 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 go research her. And in the process, read uh, some of her amazing uh, little thought pieces on, uh, on on her website, which is really easy to remember, K-A-R-A brown.com. But she doesn't even need you to go there anymore because she's <laughs> departed from that world. She, doesn't, she thinks that the Internet is a bunch of shitheads like I do. <laughs> Shrab, you got anything to plug? You want to uh, borrow? Are you going to be borrowing iPads anywhere in the neighborhood? I hate you. <laughs> are you enjoying the iPad? Can you at least give us an update? I haven't. I haven't used it since I brought it. Are home. you fucking kidding me? What? No, I. I I'm, you haven't used it. I kind of used it, and then I don't know. I, I. I. I don't know how many times we have to discuss this. What? <laughs> This is insane. Why is it insane? I, got, I gave, I let him borrow an iPad Pro because he wanted yeah. to see how it worked. Yeah. And then he came in the podcast and told a story about how me doing that made him feel bad. And, and then I felt bad about using it. Oh, and so you're just keeping it on a shelf to make things better. No. Do you have to give it back? Does he have to give it back to you? He needs it so badly because he, he, he needs two of them. He needs it so badly. He needs it so badly. Did you take it to even the score? Are you Robin Hood? No, yeah. no. I, it, it's, I look at all things creative right now as just like a weight. It's, I'm, you know, we've talked about this. Yeah. I was hoping that it would inspire me, and it didn't. Yeah. So we'll give it back. I, I told you the, last week I'd give it back. That's how most iPad purchasers feel. I think they get the they get the pencil that's thinking true, they're gonna yeah. <laughs> huh, hundred dollar pencil. Well, it's worth it because finally the the I mean, reason started, I wasn't you know, but I just I don't have anything that makes me want to 
redraw right now. I mean, unless you have something like that. You should redraw those uh, drawings that you were posting from when you were a kid. No. Remember? Those are really cool. You know. Those no. are better than anything anyone's ever drawn. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> I th I'm of the opinion that you should just take it easy and let yourself. I have been. Yeah. I have been. I'm. I'm sorry. Do you deal with? Uh, you're too young. You've never. I'm not going to ask, but you've never dealt with, uh, like, oh God, Rob like, Schraub. Uh, you're. 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 you're uh, you, do you have? Do you have germination phases where you're like, oh, I'm done. I'm. I don't. Like out I, of ideas or something. Yeah. Or I just. I can't work. I'm. I'm desiccated. I'm. Uh. I will say one of the things the internet, a good thing about the internet, was that we were writing, I was writing every single yeah, day always, and a lot of stuff. You were born into a deadline. Yeah. You were born with a deadline in your hand. Yeah. So I do, like, it, I think of it very much as like, oh, this is my job. My job is writing. And so I have to do my job. And so, yeah. Youth. <laughs> Youth. All right. Well. Uh, Does Demorge have anything to plug? Don't high road me. Whoa. I wasn't. Demorge? I know he plugs uh, Do you have anything to plug? I'm doing a live show at the Lyric Hyperion with Anna Saragina and Whit Thomas, and they've sort of come up with these personas who are poets, and they're going to do it straight as a, as a, almost as like a straight poetry reading or something. And then they came to me and said, we want you to be the person who curates the event. We're not going to tell you <laughs> what to do. You just do whatever. So I'm this character that I've sort of been creating over the last couple months. Um, named Ephraim Elizabeth King is sort of like a composite of any writing and structure I had in, in college. It's we've never had you do a character on this show. Like your character work is amazing. Oh, thanks, man. Well, like, I, did, I mean, I did. You know, what's his face in Shadow? Bernie Sanders. Oh yeah, and I mean then, you. Yeah, like, but yeah, it's like you immerse yourself into the silliest shit and then make the silly. It's like it's that's like the best. That's the best part about it. Yeah, just sort of finding connections to things and then connecting the gaps and just sort of disappearing and just you know. Coming out the other end. It, it's it, like the Fela Kuti thing is just because I was hanging out with Kyle and he said, I want to open the next episode of Gumble with this song. And it was just Fela talking and the music of his voice. I was like, that's pretty close to mine. I bet you I could do that. And then he counts off the song and he just goes, one, two, three, four. And I was like, that's, that's a five second impression. That's perfect. If you just did that and walked away. So the whole premise of that thing is like, what, how little can I do, but then also physically, I'm going to cut a crazy widow's peak in my hair and uh, and for one day just have this weird Fela Kuti haircut, and, you know, just to set up a joke that's kind of like that. Kind but of we can't stuff. order it up like a fry cook. We can't go, Demorge, you should do a crazy character for Harmontown. You should come on next time. We won't e we won't introduce you. You'll just or we'll introduce or you as, come a, in as, as an alternate th thing like you. You'll just come up as some like character and do something and walk off yeah just don't introduce me as demorge introduce me as the character and I'm, hell yeah we'll are you gonna you, do it so you're gonna go in the kitchen and cook something up and let us know when you want to do that and then i'll just yeah yeah let's do that let's do okay that. great we'll do wow this has been a productive evening i mean i do that all the time this is what i do with characters because <laughs> like, like with 101 even what i'll do is like if i if the character's ready in a way then i'll just kind of in a week I'll, the best thing is to go to food courts and malls as a character and just kind of hang out and just do mundane shit like order food and kind of be not so much to see how people react but see how it feels to be reacted to by real people because then suddenly you've got this inner thing that's that's building and it's you just think less about what's on the outside more about the insides all right yeah. dan do you have Let's anything do to plug yeah watch for my butt hell yeah i have to plug my butt I have to plug my fat ass. <laughs> I'm sorry. That no. You go ahead. You, no, 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 no. No, you had. You have something to yeah. plug here. You know why he's sorry is because he 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 lost just strategic ground. It's not because he actually has remorse or empathy. Right. He's making. A he was retreat. like, oh shit, I'm the bad guy now. I better backpedal. That's Fucking a good villain. instinct. Yeah. Yes. He's like, oh, I oh did oh uh, uh, Napoleon? Did you did you move into Russia? <laughs> I man. sure did. Just give me my iPad back. Yes, give it back. Come over and get it. Come over and get it. Terrible. Come to my house. I over. had people over yesterday. I'm you didn't writing. show up. I'm writing. It's hard to write. You're it's telling me. You're, te you're telling me. As soon as I'm finished, 
I will be a good person. I'm going to end this 45 years of being a piece of shit with retirement, and I'm going to know everyone's uh, zodiac sign. I'm going to like ask about <laughs> oh, your kids. It's gonna, I, you, everyone's going to love me. They're going to be like, you were this cool the whole time. I'm like, yeah, I was busy. That's it. <laughs> So watch for that coming up soon. Yeah. <laughs> now that Rick and Morty's in limbo, it's like fa faster upon us. Um, all right. Well, uh, Do you, does anyone have a question for me? <laughs> Spencer, is there anything you'd like to plug? Oh, I don't know. I don't know. That's a great. Oh, man. It's so interesting you ask. I guess I got to think about that. Uh, you guys hear about these uh, these Chinese murder bands? <laughs> They, uh, they're vans in China. Isn't so. that just racist slang for ambulance? No, we <laughs> we do do this every time. This I is know. great. That's my favorite. This is becoming or like a real running gag. No, but they're these man these vans that they'll they'll pick you up and they'll kill you. And in theory, they're That's in some box. cases they've they've linked to uh, selling and transmitting your organs. So watch out for that. Yeah. Also, watch out for uh, uh, if you have a student protest uh, in a giant square in the center of your town. Like they could yeah. just turn off the cameras and roll all of you over with steamrollers. And um, there's that's another thing to keep your eye out for. Right. Tenements. Did that really happen? Yeah. They fucking. <laughs> those people are spaghetti. Those people are spaghetti. By the by by numbers that would shock. By numbers. Yeah. Tiananmen Square happened, and notice the, yeah, it's like they, we're, we're like, oh, look at the guy in front of the tank. It's I so can't cool. tell if you're being serious. And then they, and then, and then they just, they just fucking soylent greened people into fucking, like, yeah, they killed everybody. They killed everybody. Everyone. This is what happens in autocracies. This is why we shouldn't like think it's cool to fucking like Russia. They kill gay people and journalists. Like they they they, they like like China is a fucking That's, like, yeah. Like you can't like like. Can I just quickly on a soapbox? Like, people people who are like, oh man, you shouldn't be worried about Russia. It's like look, read about Russia. It's really bad. They definitely are putting gay people into camps. It's not about virtue signaling. It's about pragmatism. If you're into game theory, you and, and you're fucking like you should be. Scared scared of the idea of not having checks and balances in three branches of government, you fucking idiot. Yeah, like, sorry. I, I, you, you think I'm a noble a person? Deal. I just don't want to die! A part of it is like, the, the way news is reported in this country. So, for example, when the... Uh, I can't think of the guy's name, but when the first... the, the spy, Hitler? Not the first, but when the spy was poisoned, uh, radioactively poisoned. Skirple. Uh, it showed up on ABC News the day day that it was sort of prominent, it was present, it was, this is happening, he's dying, this is going on. Um, if you read The Economist, which is not the greatest magazine in the world, but like it, it is certainly informative and has an opinion about a lot of stuff, and it's weekly. And they, he was saying for a year and a half before that, they're going to get me, they're going to get me. And people were listening, but nobody was doing anything. And when they went into Chernobyl and like, uh, or went in, went in and uh, bought these grills and like gassed that, that basement. And then said, well, there were people in there that were going to do bad things, so we had to take them all out. Uh, there was a journalist who called bullshit on that, and then she got shot in the head yep. like, in a public courtyard. Like, That's the thing. This stuff is he, within five years. Time, in a whole time. Like 20, shit, like, 20 things hit like that have happened. Like, this is not, we're not just making it up. Like, yeah, this shit is happening. People are being killed. Yeah, we had a period in American Sorry, history in the 1920s when, when, when like, it, it, when the gangland culture was, like, being celebrated by uh, journalists and, and, you know, it was prohibition and all that stuff. The thing that really brought that whole thing down wasn't necessarily prohibition's repeal and it wasn't Al Capone's taxes being uh, uh, policed. It was, they killed a journalist. Like, 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 somebody wrote something about one of the gangsters that the gangsters didn't like, and they just, they just treated him the way they treat mobsters. And the fun stopped like we in our most brutal times like we have always in this country maybe only for white people I should put an asterisk on it. it's like we have these fucking like standards of free press isn't about like piousness it's not about like being holier than thou it's about a like, goddamn like we gotta we gotta be careful we are animals we will murder each other people will get away with what they get away with like you you don't want to live in this world you think you want to live in where tough guys are are able to do whatever they want and everything seems cool. You're 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 dumb. You're dumb and you're 15 and you're stupid and I hate you. Read the flowchart. 
<laughs> this is something that I figured out with no research. I, I have, I'm as dumb as you are. I'm a, I'm a 15 year old that lived for 30 more years. If that math is right, <laughs> that's how stupid I am. I, along the way, here's what you pick up. You're going to die if the government stops being a democracy. You fucking moron. Knock it off. It's not fun. It's not going to be fun. Journalists getting killed is not, it's, it's, it is a, it, it's like, that's like your country has, has HIV at that point. Like there is, you, you can't, you, you're, uh, all right. Anyways, uh, uh, Quip toothbrushes are uh, right. a, amazing new um, technology. The, the they buzz when you brush your teeth. Harmontown is brought to you by Hymns for Men. For Hymns. For Hymns. Hymns for Hymns. For Hymns dot com. If you're bald, or or your or just your balls are. I don't think you're describing impotence right. It's not, not when your balls go bald. Not the way I get it. It's a one-stop shop for all the things that plague uh, men. Uh, you're 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 going bald. You want to avoid it. Your I guess your your wiener has. has why there. would you want to avoid it when it makes you so handsome? Yeah. <sighs> well, the listeners are going to have to answer that question for themselves when they go to forhims.com and and take advantage of of, of of our sponsorship. Take the survey; it's free. Uh, and ask yourself this: How much money is the sponsor model making uh, compared to the subscription model? And why are we doing this? Uh, when it gets to the point where you're shilling boner pills, I don't. I <laughs> I want to shill boner pills, and it's a real problem. I, it, it could be. It's a, it's it's it may be a battle we can afford to lose. Um. <laughs> All right. Well, Kara, did you have a good time? I don't want to. I don't want to. I don't want to fish, but it was a good podcast, right? Yeah, you, it was a good you podcast. You love being here. Yeah, this Will, is great. you come back sometime. Yeah, this this eight p.m. on in, on a Sunday in Burbank. <laughs> love oh it. yeah. No, it's good. <laughs> what else would I have done? All right. Well, I'm bad at ending shows. I'm bad at starting them. I'm bad at, uh, at running them. Um, everyone misses Jeff. Everyone misses Kumail. Go fuck yourself. It's a b terrible show. Here's your five dollars back. Eat my dick. Uh, fuck you. Uh, I, 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 I'll be in a better mood next week because I will be done with all of my work. All right. And I'm never going to work again. I'm not going to work on anything. That's not easy. I'm going to be like Barishnikov, but without the training. I'm just going to be a dude that's like spinning around going, there's your draft. Well, that looked like you just falling. Yeah, that's what I do. Yo. Yo. High-pitched rapping. Close the show. Yo. It's time to go out. The laptop's go. Close your shit. Buckle it. Put your shoes on, send your mom a picture of your tits Say, these are smaller than yours And she'll say, that's cause of heteronormative norms And you'll say, my titties are as big as they wanna be She'll say, but they can't compete with this, come on, see? And then you go out to lunch and, alright, good night. see ya Next week Oh, yeah, that's our show, everybody. Thanks so much for coming out. Thanks to Chris Bora, Sarah. Oh, yeah, yeah, do that. Uh, Kevin, Zach the Audio Maniac, everyone that we're forgetting, Nolan, Steve Levy. Oh, boy, thanks to our guest, Kara Brown, our guest, Comptroller Rob Schraub, Demores Brown, of course, and last but not least, our mayor, Dan Harmon. Thanks so much. Stay home and don't take chances. Did you get any of that? It's a good show.